Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we are ready to get basic science. There we go, Experiment Storage Unit, Science Junior, let's go. We can also potentially get general rocketry? Yeah, we can, and we can save a little bit of money with each launch, so <laughs> we're definitely doing that. Okay, so let's go ahead and ditch our, what is this, 8? I believe that's 8, and we'll replace the 8 t100s with four t200s and save ourselves some money for exactly the same amount of fuel and weight so this is the exact same rocket except it's slightly cheaper i think by like a hundred bucks which is a little a, a, a very small savings we'll we'll put it that way we do however need to get a science junior on here and i'm going to put that right here because the science junior has a little bit less crash tolerance than this guy does so that's good let's see we also need to get our experiment storage unit i like to put that right below the parachute so that it has the biggest chance of surviving possible okay what else are we gonna do i did in between episodes experiment with trying to figure out what was causing the frame drops in my recording i'm not 100 percent sure what it was things seem to be better but not perfect so uh there's that let's see we've got 1834 meters per second we may want to put a second stage on this but not quite yet i think yeah i i, I think not quite yet Let's just go ahead and launch this as is. We can get ourselves our science data from the ground from the Science Junior. And then it's going to take us quite a few launches, actually, to get where we need to... Ooh. Is it foggy? Never seen this before. What is even happening? Well, we'll get our materials study and recover the vessel. I'm not sure what exactly that was. This scene appears to be fine, which is certainly intriguing. Let's launch it again and see if it still happens. Because in my tests earlier, it definitely wasn't doing that. Okay, seems fine now. Let's uh, go ahead and launch this, then. We'll do a materials study while flying low. I'll just go ahead and close those doors. And we're going to have to do several launches of the orbital variety to get our science. But that's okay. This particular rocket isn't going to get orbital. There's no doubt about that. Okay, let's uh, let's start angling over a little bit now. Whoa, that's too much. That was way too much. We lost all attitude control. Okay. That's fine. It actually is fine. Okay, let's just go right over here. There we go. What is our apoapsis? basically this. Roger that. Let's... No! What is this thing even doing? Why is it so tippy? Come on. I want to be going up right now. Boy, this rocket is very tippy. Okay, we're out of fuel. That's all good. We'll go ahead and grab our crew report, atmospheric pressure scan, and let's grab a mystery goo observation. I doubt we're going to be able to get much more. Collect all. And at this point, we may as well detach. And we're going to be heading down shortly. So that flight didn't go amazingly well, did it? But that's okay. Let's uh, continue being locked essentially retrograde and I'm going to clear the time warp 
let's go ahead and launch our parachutes. Oh, did I mess that up too? Wow. Okay, I guess I'm just really distracted by this recording in like 50 FPS rather than 60. I don't know why it is. It wasn't doing this before. And like in the StarCraft, if I tab into OBS, then it just records at 60. It's so weird. I don't know. As far as I can tell, it's not a bottleneck. Because I'm tabbing between the two right now. GPU utilization doesn't really seem to change. Actually, it does. But I'm recording on my second GPU. Both GPUs are in PCIe X16s, so it's not a bus issue. But when I tab into OBS, GPU Zero's utilization jumps up by about double. GPU Zero is currently being utilized by nothing except OBS. Intriguing. I wonder if they changed something with the full screen windowed? that I use? I don't know. I might try restarting KSP after this and try it in regular full screen. Because yeah, this is definitely a problem. It was all the way down to 30 FPS there. Ugh. I thought I had it fixed, but apparently not. Well, fixed-ish. I thought I had it to where it would record at like 50 FPS. It's not a CPU bottleneck. It can't be a GPU bottleneck. So I have no idea what it is. I'll have to experiment. Anyway, for now, we'll just do this as is. Okay, let's go ahead and splash down. Excellent, crew report. Temperature scan. Atmospheric pressure scan. Mystery goo observation. It's fine that that flight didn't go amazingly well. We need to do multiple flights like that. And we got 45.9 science for that. That is not bad. So what do we want to spend that on? Well, I would love to get the experiment control station and cargo cargo storage unit. That would be great. There's, we can't afford that yet though. We're probably better off getting advanced rocketry to get the terrier so that we can do a second stage. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards doing right now. And that also gives us T400 fuel tanks so we can actually save additional money in the creation of this rocket. So let's go ahead and we're, we're gonna keep calling this the flea one. But let's replace this here. And let's put in a second stage, like so. And then let's go ahead and coupling, coupling, <laughs> put in a decoupling. And then a pair of 400s. Now what's our thrust to weight ratio here? I mean, our delta V is not great. Our thrust to weight is okay. And of course, this is at sea level. We don't know what the vacuum delta V here is, unfortunately. So what if we make this essentially a T-800? Which we don't have access to quite yet. Is this going to... Oh, it doesn't require us to upgrade the pad. I'm a little shocked. Actually make that a lot shocked. And as we go up, you'll note this number here is going to be increasing as we approach the vacuum of space. So I think overall, this should be enough to get us orbital. And we're going to run probably several orbital flights. So let's go ahead and launch this.
and enjoy the wonderful frame rate that is apparently happening for reasons. I mean, when we're on the ground like this, it's 60 FPS solid. No problems. It's when we start going up. Which makes me think that, like before, I was thinking maybe it was an issue with the particles in StarCraft. But I don't know. Let's get out of here, though. I have troubleshot basically everything I can think of on it other than, because currently I'm running KSP in borderless windowed mode. Since it's a Unity game, you can do a command line argument to force it to run in a borderless windowed. But I think after this episode, I'm going to try restarting KSP and turning that option off and run it in full screen exclusive mode, or maybe just straight up windowed mode, and see if either of those help. Now there was an option that KSP added, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to look at that and see if it's a problem with that, because I wasn't having this problem before the latest patch, and the game still runs fine, it's just capturing it I'm having an issue with. I'm going to go ahead and start heading eastward a little bit. I don't want to head eastward too, too much. I want to be just a little east for right now, but you can see... Our vacuum engines, Delta V, has come up so much. Like, our amount of Delta V is almost increasing right now. Because of our current, our current apoapsis. So I'm going to materials study here. And we'll go ahead and close those doors. There we go. We are almost out of fuel for our first stage. What's our current apoapsis? 70. Perfect. We are suborbital. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ditch that stage. Let that slow down in the atmosphere and fall back to Kerbin. And then for right now, let's just keep an eye on this. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and time warp it a little bit closer. Of course, we don't have patch conics, and we can't uh, do maneuver nodes or anything, so we're going to have to essentially fly blind here. I'm going to go ahead, and we're now in space. So let's crew report, temperature scan, atmospheric pressure scan, mystery goo observation. Collect all of that. And let's begin our burn at the horizon. I don't know if we can circularize from here, but we're going to try. We have a lot of speed to go, though. It's going to be close. I probably waited too long for this circularization burn, is my theory. It's a potential problem. Like, uh, we're still a little ways from the apoapsis. We do need another kilometer per second, though. I mean, we've got the delta V. If we fail this, it's because I failed it, not because the rocket failed it. Interestingly, now that we're in space, it's capturing at a solid 60 FPS. Maybe it's something to do with atmospheric effects. We're now past the apoapsis, but we've only got about 500 kilometers per second to go. Let's continue burning prograde. Well, prograde-ish. Yeah, let's go full prograde. About another 300. Continue to burn prograde. I think we're going to make it. It's going to be a lopsided orbit because I waited too long. But that's okay. Okay, we're going to wait here and we're going to finish the circularization at the apoapsis. We are going to be dipping into the atmosphere a little bit at the periapsis, but that's fine. 
However, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and I'm going to try restarting KSP inside of the, uh, or rather restarting KSP without the borderless window option, and we'll see if that fixes the problem that I've been having with the recording. Hopefully it does. Subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.